I'm Karen Stevens, EA's Director of Accessibility. In my presentation today is Accessibility Best Practices, Mobility Considerations. And this is for GDC Summer of 2021. I strongly advocate for accessible presentation templates as accessible as possible. So yes, I used my own in this case, but um, this is for GDC 2021 Summer. Now, accessibility really matters to me, and especially mobility too. I have problems with my own hands. So I have tendonitis in my wrists and thumbs, especially thumbs. I have carpal tunnel syndrome, and I have centralized nerve damage. You put that all together, and it's really hard for me to use a lot of games. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is actually personal observations of things I've had to deal with, deal with myself. Um, but this also covers a wide, wider variety of things that I know others encounter and is just an overall thing. You'll notice a lot of personal notes in this talk just simply because of my issues with my hands. So let's go to a few statistics before we get rolling. Uh, this is all from the U.S. Center for Disease Control. So if if people who have, if you talk about all ages, about one in five people have a permanent disability. When you get to 18 plus, you're at one in four. By around retirement age, it's two in five. By the time you're in your mid 70s, it's one in two. And statistically speaking, the majority of people will be permanently disabled before they die. It's just a numbers fact. So, it's important to try to consider how do we keep people gaming and how do we have as many people be able to game as possible? Inclusion really matters. There is a wide variety of devices out there that help different needs. For example, you could have an eye gaze technology, which is what the uh, upper left um, image is, where it shows a screen. You have people you can use their eyes sort of like a mouse. Um, and that allows them to play some games. Like I know Sims 4 can be played that way. And you might have VR, like the PSVR, and, and may have motion sensors and things. You could be using a mouse and keyboard, or you could be using something like the Switch um, controls that have two different pieces. There might be one piece like the Xbox Elite controller, but they have buttons on the bottom. There might be a touch screen involved. It might be something like the Xbox accessibility controller, which has a lot of different devices that can be attached to it. All of those are super helpful. The more things you have and the more ways there is to interact with games, the more likely it is there's a combination that will help a person. However, it's not a magic bullet. You still need to consider the games itself because these devices alone is not enough. You have to actually design for accessibility. It's not just a device thing. So one nice thing I love seeing is that more console games now support keyboard and mice from the get-go. That is wonderful. Every time you would allow a different type of device and make it a or type of thing, this means that more people can play your game. Um, some people may have easier time using a mouse. Some people may have an easier time using the sticks. It varies by the person and what type of mobility issues they may have, or just even their preference. Now, one thing I really love seeing even better than the Halo Master Chief Collection's uh, preferred device is Minecraft has a full keyboard gameplay. This means it's keyboard only support. So in addition to saying you have mouse and keyboard or controller, you also have keyboard. Every time you get rid of the and in a device, you open doors because some people may be able to use it in other ways. Um, so it's important to try to have as many of those different type of individualized options as possible. Now, when we talk about devices and trying to figure out um, what type of inputs and how to deal with inputs, dead zones were traditionally exist. So if a controller has a tweak on their stick, they're character may drift. So to keep the sticks from drifting, you have a dead zone saying that if it's within this area of the controller, ignore the input. Now, having this be custom helps people with mobility issues too, because it allows them to say, if I have hand jitter or something, it allows them to go through and say, okay, so I only want to worry about the edges. Ignore any time my hand shakes. I just care if it's full throttle or nothing. This lets them be more able to do this. At the same point in time, uh, this is Borderlands 3 screen, the 
this game allows access dead zones. That means that if you have something where you want to bias it, so up, down, left, right on a stick is, is most of it, and diagonals are mostly ignored, they're shifted to the edge, it allows you to do that. So if you just want to be able to look up and down or left and right, and you, you keep having your controller drift in various ways, this gives you more options to do that. And I love that that exists. Analog sensitivity fits multiple needs. It can, needs to be faster for those who have trouble with large motions, but it needs to be slower for those who lack dexterity to handle small motions. So you put that together, it's important for sensitivity to both go up and down. Now, some people may have more issues where I accidentally keep looking up and down and I don't want to. So being able to set like horizontal and vertical separately is important. Even better is to have this on every single axis. And for the screenshot here, it's Portal 2. Single sticks. I love single sticks. Um, stretching my hands out on a controller hurts. Um, the more I have to stretch, the harder it is. So only needing one stick means that it gives my right hand a break. And my right hand needs as many breaks as possible. So Diablo 3, I played it hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of hours. And the main reason being, it has one stick. <laughs> you don't have a, a camera stick. You just have one stick. Most games that I played for hundreds of hours, I have noticed, have one stick. Um... In addition to this, I also have it configured so I don't have to use as many buttons as possible so I can avoid the triggers. It's hard for me to stretch. So I'm basically most of the time using one stick A and B. And yes, it's true that not all builds work great for this, but plenty do where I can finish the season. And it's not about being the most ultimate number one gamer. It's about having an experience. It's so important to allow experiences. I can play this game with my friends with no problems, and I absolutely love that. Now, stick flipping is important too, and this is a Halo Master Chief Collection screen. Stick flipping means that if you're left-handed, it probably helps, and that's probably the reason why most people think about stick flipping. But for someone like me, one hand is harder to use than the other. It varies by day as to which one of my hands has a harder time. So being able to move things around and figure out where the sensitivity matters makes it way, way easier for people with mobility issues to play the game. So I recommend being, making things as configurable as possible and stick flipping is great. Now, another thing is Toggle versus hold versus button mashing versus quick time events. And this is Jedi Ball in order. Here you have, um, you can disable button mashes and quick time events. Quick time events are usually a wall for me. <laughs> I cannot hit buttons very quickly. And if it's using the bumpers and triggers and the face buttons, I am going to have a problem, especially if it involves bumpers and triggers. Because um, my hands just do not do that that motion very well. So the fact you can turn it all off is amazing. I love it so much. Um, you can also turn off things like if you hold out A and there's like a little, you know, uh, meter to say that you really want to do something, you can turn that off and just hit a button. The longer I hold buttons down, the more likely my hands are going to be fatigued. So the fact that there is a way to turn that off really, really matters. They also have lots of auto motion, like auto walk on target um, and auto grip on wall. And I'll tell you, I probably would not be able to make the jump as you see in the screen here, where I'm jumping onto a fence and having to grab the fence. Having to hit a button to jump and then hit a button to hit the fence is probably not gonna happen. So the fact it's an automatic motion, as soon as I touch the fence, I cling, that's great. <laughs> That lets me be able to play. Otherwise, I would probably just keep falling and falling and falling. Like I did when I tried to take the screenshot with the character in air. It's really hard for me to take screenshots and play it at the same time. So um, I'm really glad these auto motions exist. Now, auto aim is another thing that matters. Um, 
this is great for a wide variety of people, but when it comes to mobility issues, it means that I know if I just hit this button, I don't have to try to make a stick to pick something. And in case you notice, my whole thing is about not having to use sticks very much. <laughs> I have problems. Um, but this means I don't have to use that. If I see that there's like this little blue cone, this is an NHL 20. Um, if I see I'm within that blue cone, that means I'm good. And that means that I can just hit a single button and it goes much, much better than it would otherwise. Now, I know in this particular screenshot, I'm not looking at the actual goal. Again, I have trouble taking screenshots and actually playing the games at the same time. I actually did all these captures myself. <laughs> so, on my home Xbox. <laughs> Auto jump. Any auto anything is wonderful. <laughs> auto jump with Minecraft means most of Minecraft is only a one block jump anyway. This means that instead of jumping every single time I want to go up one block, I just keep moving the controller forward and it just keeps going. That is great. So I, uh, I strongly recommend um, allowing as many different auto features as you possibly can. Auto grab, auto jump, auto open something, auto anything. The more auto you have, the better. Another thing that matters, and this is Dragon Ball Fighter Z. You wouldn't think, mo you know, mobility issues in fighter games. They can work. Dragon Ball Fighter Z is has a great single player mode and i bought the game specifically for the single player mode and it's really the only fighting game that i have a really easy time relatively speaking playing because you know it says 26 hits you've got this wonderful combo going as it shows on the screen i think i probably only hit three or four buttons um, there are combos in terms of having to do complicated sequences you don't actually have to use them and because of that, that means I can only hit a few buttons and it does all these wonderful things. It's true that those moves may be slightly weaker, but at the same point in time, the game allows grinding of levels in story mode, which means that even if I'm not doing as much power, I will eventually be able to beat it anyway. And it's all about having an experience. So one nice thing about this game is that it's custom. You can fully customize what button does what. And it lets you pick certain button combinations, like heavy and medium attacks of sort of things. And it lets you assign one button to multiple button presses. Anytime I have to hit less buttons, it's a win. The fact that it originally, none of those double buttons are alias. You have to do that yourself. You can even alias the menu button. So I have the menu button doing something that I think is supposed to be a tapping event. I don't know. I've never actually been able to do a tapping event. My hands don't do that. Um, but this means that I was able to use some combos just because they're hitting multiple buttons at once. And I was able to play the story mode and I had a wonderful time. It's true that I probably won't do well in multiplayer because I can't do all the fancy things. But at the same point in time, I still had a wonderful time with single player. I bought it knowing of that. And it was great. You know, anytime somebody has an experience, even if it's not the ideal experience, that's still a win. Ideal is wonderful too, but an experience is really, really important. It may actually not be that hard to do. Reduce button modes. Um, this is FIFA 20. I believe um, the, it has the ability, well, it has the ability to reduce the number of buttons you play. And I think if the two button mode was introduced around 19 or 20, I'm becoming a little vague on what was released when. But I do know that in, actually it was probably released in 19. In 20, they added in, like we have the, the two button modes, so you have less options to do. But then they have, in 20, they added in the one button mode. This means you just need one stick and one button. That's it. And that's so it's, let's say someone's using an Xbox accessibility controller and they have a rudder a control attached to it. So they're using a foot to move one stick and they have one giant button they're using their arm on. That's enough to play FIFA. That's great. 
This is exactly the type of experience we want people to be having. Um, it's really important to be able to say, I can't play. And it's okay if it's not the same for everyone. It, it doesn't matter. It's about having an experience. Now, optional haptic feedback is important to me in particular because it makes my hands go numb. The more vibrations there are to a device, um, the harder time I'm going to have playing. So it's really important to me to be able to turn it off. When I was playing Sea of Solitude, as you see here, I, the menu, the main menu has controller vibrations. <laughs> and I'm like, no, my hands are already going numb. But I immediately went to the menu and I was able to turn it off. The thing is, it actually had multiple levels of it. So I could say I want maximum controller vibrations, or I can say I just want the things that are really important and all the you know environmental stuff, I don't care as much. Or I can say none. I immediately said none, but I really deeply appreciate that they had multiple levels. And I also would love to see things like really vibrations could have tracks like audio has tracks. So like when you have... Uh, environmental sounds and you have uh, music things or special effects, you could do the same thing with haptic. And the fact that you can turn on and off things is wonderful because that means that if it's something that cues in on like, oh, there's a special key in the room, I might still be able to feel that. Um, but at the same point in time, I don't necessarily need to hit every single time a bomb drops. I don't need a controller vibrating. So I love the fact that these exist. It helps so much. Provide as many difficulty options as possible. Easy mode is okay. And really, easy varies for everyone. What is easy for one person could be impossible for someone else. And we should not be policing experiences. The most important point is to have an experience. This is Celeste. Celeste is known to be hard to play. And one of the first things I did is that I set the game to half speed going, okay, this should be enough. Maybe I don't need infinite stamina and visibility, but that at least means that when I have this fast moving jumps, I might be able to react in time. I will say that that was absolutely not true. Oh my God, this game is so hard, so fast. And I kept jumping and blowing up because as soon as you touch a spike, you are dead. Unless you turn on invulnerability. At that point, you touch the spikes, you're not instantly dead, and you can figure out, so what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> and you don't have to start the whole screen over. It is wonderful that either way, you only have to redo a screen. But overall, um, I didn't think I was going to need this, and it turns out I very desperately did. Um, and that meant that I played. Now, if I didn't have those options, I would have hit a wall very, very early that I would not have been able to get past. At that point... I've only played a couple percentage points of the game. So this means that I can play and experience the majority of the game and story. And that's what really matters is having an experience. Friendly fire. Now to avoid dragging my friends gamer tags and as the screen capture of Diablo three is technically single player. However, the visualization still applies. When I'm playing as a wizard, fire is everywhere. <laughs> literal fire is everywhere. This means that it's difficult to avoid hitting other people. And if Diablo allowed friendly fire, I think everybody would have a hard time playing it together. <laughs> um, so it's wonderful that it doesn't, but that type of behavior is true for pretty much any game because I am not going to be trying to attack friendly targets. However, my hands are terrible. <laughs> So if I'm trying to shoot and somebody gets in the way or whatever, or my hand drifts a little bit or whatever, um, I'm probably going to hit friendly targets. <laughs> and I really don't want to shoot my friends. That's really not the goal here. So I greatly appreciate what options exist to turn it off, or if it's just not there in the first place like it is with Diablo. Um, yeah, I love this game so much. <laughs> I love games in general. I play the majority of the games we have here and then some. Um, how much I play varies on my hands and I'm very careful about it, but I am a very much a hardcore gamer. <laughs> Can chat means less typing. So when you're playing with your friends, friendly fire is not the only thing that matters. Communication matters too. Now, can chat's wonderful for so many reasons. It 
means that I don't have to do extensive typing, but I can still get the point across. It's great for localization. And the same playing with somebody who speaks a different language. I send a message, they get it in their own language. It's great. It, um, it's also great because it um, means you don't need a mic. You can just pick a number, pick, you know, pick whatever you want. And what I really, really love, and this is Apex Legends, what I really love the most about Apex Legends is that you can specify what your quips or okay, can shot is. I, love, I prefer friendly messages and like, hi, how are you doing? Everything's great. You know, great game. And I can do that. And I can pick all positive, friendly sounding messages and still have a persona in the game. And it's all done through can chat. I absolutely adore this. Now, I will say one thing, this is Skyrim, which I recently rediscovered again, starting by playing this and realizing it was re-released. I didn't realize it was re-released. Now I get to get the achievements all over again. So I'm having a great deal of fun. Um, well, one thing I love about the Elder Scrolls series in particular, saves. They have saves. You can have save as much as you want in so many different ways. In Skyrim, it allows you to save when you're about to go to sleep in the game. You can save if you're just like, you know, there's an option to wait, so you can just let time pass. So if you're waiting for a store to open, you don't have to wait game speed. You can just jump ahead. <clears throat> you can save on fast traveling between locations automatically. And you can pick how long you want save periods to happen if you're just sitting on the character menu and walk away for a while. So it goes, game goes, oh, in this case here, I said for 15 minutes. 15 minutes has gone by, and it's like, I should probably save just in case something happens type of thing. And the nice thing about all this, you can have as many save slots as you want, hard drive notwithstanding. But, I mean, I have hundreds. Um, at this point, I'm on save slot 1,000 something, but I, I, I do reuse them. I don't have literally that many, but I do have quite a few. Um I love the fact that the auto saves are all their own slots too. That's fantastic. That means if, if, if I do forget to save before I do something, then I luckily an auto save will be close enough. Um, I save a lot. I am terrible at jumping, jumping. I am terrible at anything that requires dexterity. So if I'm going to jump or if I'm going to try to do something and I know that's very likely I'm probably going to fall over and just die from a fall, I will say first. <laughs> Um, this is, I love the fact it lets me do this. <clears throat> and if I make a mistake like that, I can just go back to my previous save. And that's great. So, next thing, another thing that Elder Scrolls Skyrim lets you do is it has mods. It's so amazing to see mods being allowed in a console game. And what I love is they also have categories for it. One thing I would love to see in the future is an accessibility category. Um, and not just this, but all games, because then the people who are purposely trying to make things to get past some of the issues they may encounter have an avenue to do this. And that would be fantastic. It's all about having an experience. Now, to recap, I will rattle these off for those of you who are listening only. Um, we talked about multi-device support, dead zones and sensitivity for each analog input and access, stick, single stick support, stick flipping, toggle versus hold versus button mashing, and optional quick time events. Auto action support, be it jump, jump, aim, or anything else. Simple button presses over combos. Customizing input layout, reduced button modes, optional haptic feedback, Friendly Fire Safe, Custom Can Chat, Save Options, and Allow Mods. And you're welcome to screen cap this as a quick summary to remember of the types of things that really do help people with mobility issues, myself included. <laughs> now, we, I, there is going to be a live Q&A. You can check the schedule for it. I, I don't know the schedule at the time of this recording. 
and I would strongly suggest you attend. You are welcome to ask me anything outside of this from my previous presentations too. I really don't mind. So if you have any questions in the realm of accessibility in general, feel free to ask. I look forward to seeing you there. If you have questions, you want to reach me online. The easiest way to reach me really is the Twitter, EA underscore accessible. Um, I am there all the time. And if you're looking for more information on electronic arts and accessibility in games, ea.com slash able is our portal site. And I recommend looking at it if you're looking for more information. Thank you so much for watching my presentation and have a wonderful GDC. Mm -hmm.